Hello? Well, welcome to another Bulb Blog Video Diary Supplement Garden Walkabout. I'm catching a little weather window here because we've had some terrible wind and rain that blew in from the west last night and ravaged the garden with the wind blasting things but very grateful for the rain because things are very dry so the, the rain is welcome, it's helping the Mechanopsis come up here in the bed I'm standing beside some of the Erythronium plunges Erythronium's virtually all over now just one or two in flower some of the things I want to look at today is the textures and the foliage the lovely pale green soft colour of the fern I love it it's really delicate fern, the naming of ferns is problematic to me the names are very difficult I think it's a gymnospermium or something like that it's the, I think perhaps called the oak fern commonly but it is a very nice one it runs delicately around but I especially like it if I come around here in this area where we've got it growing through with the dicentra and here we see we've got a mixture of dicentra foliage as well the finer cut foliage is of dicentra eximia which is from the Appalachian Mountains and the, and the thicker less ferny but still ferny but not so finely cut and sometimes greener foliage is that of Dicentra formosa from the Pacific coastline of North America and when you of course with the two of them in the garden they've hybridized so a lot of what we're looking at in these are the hybrids between the two but you can see how well it goes with the fern and up here with Corridalis crate in purple it's just coming out now so this is one of a number of plants I've got in different spots in the garden to trial it but you can see how it's very happy to come up and grow tall through the fern if it's in a more exposed open site treated as a spot plant in an open bed it will stay slightly more compact but most plants are very happy to grow up through other plants you can see here if I move in they are spotted but the Aracema nepenthoides climbing up growing nicely there is another one over there but that got nipped off with the frost they are susceptible to getting caught by late frosts but you can see here the the greener dicentra is more like the formosa while the softer grey and more finely divided is more like the nivalis we've also got in here dicentra cucularia of course and some of the other trilliums we looked at trilliums the other week these are the trillium sulcatum hybrids crossed with what flexipes with perhaps same erectum but with, with the slope of the stem I suspect that flexipes is involved so it's probably a flexipes crossed with sulcatum and all sorts growing up there, there are other trilliums in here here's another one looking a bit better because as I say we're at the wind I don't know if you're hearing the wind but here's a this looks like a trillium cuneatum or type can't see until it opens but there's more little ones poking up down here they've been in flower earlier we come round to talking of ferny foliage this is a another form of Corydalis that seeds around got fine ferny foliage not very interesting flowers it's got sort of yellow flowers that not very interesting when but the foliage is certain to make it worth going for alone a few fritillarias so fritillaria camptensis really neat one not lovely so this dark camptensis comes from Kamshatka as the name suggests so it grows in Japan in that north 
far northeastern corner of Russia and, and it also grows in North America. These are North American forms. They do vary slightly so there's some there, we'll maybe see more as I walk around, there's a taller one along there which I'll look at in a minute but I want to tip back to the bulb bed. It's just not long ago was bare ground with just some of the smaller bulbs coming through but look at it now it's a real riot of growth. We've gone through the different stages of the smaller bulbs and now there's there's delphiniums, there's all sorts of alliums. The big yellow flower is Doronicums. There's a diasporum, diasporum hookeri. Sorry, it's, I'm still using the name diasporum, it's the name I remember. The name I learnt it by. It's been reclassified as protastases or something, I can't remember exactly, but I stick with the name I've learnt. It'll take me a while. I, it's as if it's not difficult enough remembering all the names, they keep changing them. We've got some plants who've had their names changed at least twice. We're having to memorise or learn a third name. Down here, on the edge of the path. Ramonda. This is Ramonda Nathalia. You can see how the, the rain and the wind have knocked the little flowers off. So Ramonda Nathali growing through Cymbalaria muralis. This, cymbalaria, this bit of Cymbalaria is not in flower. It will flower later. It's just rampant and growing through here. It's Again it's a great little plant, carpeting plant. You can have all sorts, look there's Hepatica and Oxalis all coming through. Oh, and the rain's coming back, so this may not be such a long video of this because some of these downpours are really heavy. But let me just walk around here before it gets too bad into the... Some of the other bigger ferns, so oh, the shuttlecock ferns. There's aconites. So the garden becomes a bit of a jungle at this time. Around here again where all the Corydalis and the early bulbs flowered. We've still got some trilliums hanging on. Ovularia, Ovularia grandiflora. More trilliums down here. The Ovularia grandiflora. Different forms that seeds around. Ovularia, we've got perfoliata, perfoliata and grandiflora and a lot of seedlings, a lot of these in here are seeding around. A spin around here, here's a clump here and down there you can see a, seed, a seedling self-seeded. The bluebells, well these are the one much hated by many, the, the Spanish bluebell and the Spanish hybrid that is hybridized with the, with the other forms so it's, I don't know why we're so fussy about plants that grow so well and so easily. They're beautiful. If it was a rare and difficult plant and challenging to grow, we'd all want it. And I can see in there at the base of the embothrium more, more of the ovularia seeded in. Not the embothrium, this is the, sorry, this is crinodendron. Flowers just starting to push out. Okay, well, let's push on. The rain's just holding, I'm just getting gentle rain on my head, it's not too bad, so we'll just walk around a bit more. This is a uh, rhododendron Albert Schweitzer, I can show you these flowers. Really nice, good coloured form, it's an old hybrid, pretty old hybrid, and the, most of the flowers are way up there, above my head. We come round past more, more trillium erectums. So white, a uh, typical de erectums. And this is either a white erectum or a, a hybrid. Difficult to work out. This is the embothrium I'm walking past now. You see that again, not out fully yet, but just starting to show. 
is starting to show some colour. Blowing about in the wind. So we come round in the another form of or another seedling of the Fritillaria camshatensis. Here's the seeds of, look, seed pods with the Aranthus hyamalis just in seed. So it's a good time now when I've finished this video, I'll come and gather some of those seeds. Already some of them have shed around here and just scatter them in other areas, paint where I want it. If I come up here and look under the leaf, this Podophyllum, really Podophyllum peltatum. Burgundy rich flowers, very dark, appear black, but they're hidden under this giant leaf. Unless you know they're there and know to get down and poke the leaf, tip the leaf back, you wouldn't see them. Yep, more trilliums. Oh, this is, this is a Rugelia, for sure. You can see how the flowers underneath the underneath the foliage. The Trillium grandiflorums are going over now. But again, they're very happy even when they're growing through the dicentra. But these are out in a bit more open space and different ones. There's some Trillium albidums. The grandiflorums well going over. Come around here we've got Fritillaria. This is Fritillaria affinis. Another North American species. This is the yellow form. Not so common. More common forms. Here's a more co one of the more common forms of these. Again, not dissimilar to the coloration of the Fritillaria camshatensis I was showing you. So they've got these dark speckled flowers. So there's one, another seedling down here and there. Likewise they are speckled all over the garden. But really interesting. These are the plants, you've got to search them out. Uh, Fritillaria, that's like my petala going over. The one that my petala. Different Fritillarias in the garden. Layer media. So we go around the here's some more Corridalis craked in blue. This is one I planted in quite deep shade to see how it would grow in deep shade. And again look at the the lovely way it picks up from the Geranium robertianum. Another plant that many would pull out as a weed. But Weed is a, an attitude of mind. If you don't think they're weeds, they cease to become weeds. So there's Corridalis craigs in blue. With the Mechanopsis cambrica or papaver. Cambricum is it now again a plant that's changed not only its specific name but it's, it's now in its another genus. A great plant that comes seeds around freely if you let it. If you deadhead it, then you won't get seeds. So, and that will encourage more, yet more flowers. Up to the other bed here was changing again, very different to how it looked earlier. The new bed by the pond, you can tell it's been wet. And thing, you look at the carpet of flowers from the rhododendron fortuni. Which is up above my head. Beautiful scented flowers. So the, some of them would have hung on for a few more days, but the wind and heavy rain, and there's more coming. We're in the lull between the heavy, one batch of rain and the other. So we've got Ramonda Nathaliae here again, and this is if you read the bulb log, this is the bit that I split. I lifted and split a plant because it was 
looking you can see how if you look at that plant it's a bit looking a bit stressed it's not flowering it wasn't so happy as the ones up here so it's I split it down to cut the congestion and took the spare rosettes and planted them in the trough over there which you can maybe go around and look at in a minute so that's Ramonda nathaliae different forms different seedlings some with green stems and some with dark stems now well, here we come here's Molly you coming now Molly hello you going to say hello what are you finding anything interesting she's always out poking about so yes I, I split that now don't go in there if you, you don't like falling in the pond this will be live view of Molly falling in the pond she's looking for frogs or newts come out of there come on Molly back off please that's it thank you yeah where was I oh yeah Ramonda I split it off so there's, there's a bit down there and you can always split these or mostly always with a bit of root attach another one there another one there that's got two noses another one down there so from that one plant you can get a whole host of them and in the ball blog I also show how you can actually propagate it from from leaf cuttings so let's go back this way and have a look here everything's it's amazing how quickly things freshen up with the rain you know I've been watering but no amount of my watering will make up for the rain there's all sorts going down there I can see the orchids and peonies and lilies gentians there yeah more lilies and using the carpeting bedding I love having plants that run and form carpets so we don't see the ground it's much more like walking and what you would see in a wild situation here we have pyrola media these are the new leaves coming through now the old leaves are still there from last season so it's evergreen unless we get a really hard winter in which case they sometimes lose the leaves but that's the new leaves coming and as you can see all the plants the erythroniums some of the smaller lilies there's Jeffersonia Corydalis Anemone so many things the wee Trillium rivalis all can quite happily come up through it I'm talking of carpeting here's a nice little carpeting view for the you match the size of the plant that you're using to carpet with the size of the plants you're planting so at this end we've got smaller plants so here we've got Cornus Swekica so the wee cor tiny Cornus and growing through with it is the Meanthemum bifolium and this is a form called the Akushimenum which I should imagine must suggest that it comes from the island of Yakushimena where of course the famous rhododendron Yakushimenum came from there's been a lot of interesting plants come from there so there's the small leaves these little white flowers are not stunning but I just love these little plants that run gel gently about and we've got it in a number of troughs and raised beds it's a great plant to grow with the smaller trilliums Hibrisonoi coming up and the pyrula matches in with it as well so you've got pyrola we've got the meanthemum we've got the wee cornus and of course another plant that runs about is erythronium americanum getting all the way up here and the bigger the seed pods of the erythronium revolutums and we've also got sibericum and everything else in here so where are we going there Primula marginata, Salmisia, Pectori, the silvery, very silver one. 
and the manella is really still going strong and well. Up there this prittle area Perinaica has gone over. You can see the erythronium leaves going down in some of the earliest ones. The leaves are going yellow. The seed pods are forming. Not the best. Oh, look what I've just found. I've not, not, this is just shot up. That has really come from nowhere. Because I was here just a few days ago taking pictures of this white erythronium oregonum, the latest, the last to flower of all the erythroniums in the garden. And there was no sign of this orosema. This is orosema wilsoni. Oh my goodness. This is the magic of plants. I know it's there. I planted it there. But it was out of my mind because it's been down underground. And one good night's rain. And a bit of warmth in the soil from the hotter days and warmth it shoots up. And this is how it is now. You can see these lovely flowers. And it will go up and it's got huge leaves the size of rhubarb leaves and it's a plant with the stature of a rhubarb plant. So it will push up. So much going on in there. More, more lilies. And again you'll see the, our typical carpeting plant. So long after the flowers of the anemone. This is the pallida or lipsiensis. We've got the geranium. Look how happy it is in there. Going well. We've got corydalis creating in blue. We've got tree peonies. I can see primulas coming through, lilies coming through, the latheris. So much. I think we'll go up here. Let's finish the walk up this way because I'm not sure how much longer it's going to be dry. Past my sculpture. Now this is this is uh, another of the Corridalis hybrids. This is a sister seedling to Corridalis craigs in purple. This is the one that this is the runner up the one that didn't get named. It was a tough choice but we did have to make a decision which one we'd name. Like any of you have been watching when I've been asking for your opinion on the erythroniums, it's the same. I like to name good plants. There's nothing wrong with this. It's a good plant. It's got knocked up open in the centre with the heavy rain and the wind. But it forms lovely dense cushions of foliage through the winter. Here we have more of the frittle area. Over there we have more ovularia. More bluebells. More aranthus seeding. The tree of peonies over there. That's tree of lutea. I picked this because I wanted to walk round. Let me see, I've still got the hose pipe out. But... Tropiolum, Tricolorum, still going well here. In the glass houses, it's going back because of the heat. So, as I walk around here, we've got the Podophyllum hexandrum. Nice plants, lovely foliage at this time. Comes out dark. It will go greener with brown spotches. But... I'm just heading up to the other plant of Corydalis craigs in purple because I think my luck's going to run out as the so there we have the two can we spot the difference well it's difficult to see because the the one on the left is the other hybrid and the one on the right is craigs in purple and it's these flowers Crate and purple comes out a wee bit later, so the flowers haven't fully expanded, so it's it's difficult to see the differences, and I don't know if the camera's catching the subtle differences, but they are subtly different. Crate and purple increases. 
that's a box of for propagating. So I think um, that's probably long enough now for this video. I'll leave it here as we walk up with the raised beds, the slab beds and another of my favourites are the dwarf salix and perhaps it's a good place here to stop with the dwarf salix and looking up to the wider garden so thank you very much for joining me if you've stayed with me through this walk I do appreciate it I do appreciate everyone that views my videos. I've now got over 100,000 total views. So thank you very much. And see you next time. Goodbye.